Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the first of 20 reviews. This is the most amount of movies I've ever seen at a film festival. This is the most amount of movies I've seen at the New York Film Festival, and uh, I'm very tired at this point. I think I'm about like halfway through by the time I'm recording this. The first week just ended, and I am so exhausted. At a certain point, I just felt like, are my reviews even going to be credible at this point? Because I've been digesting so many movies that it's really hard to process things at this point. But you know, we're just trucking along anyway. I saw 600 movies movies last year, I can do this, you know? I had some difficulties getting tickets this year, which I will talk about once we get to the movies where uh, I have a shitty seat and we'll, we'll get to that. But for now, let's just move on with the review. So Bergman Island is the latest film by Mia Hansen Love, the director of Goodbye First Love, which was the first film I saw from her, and I thought it was okay. There's a lot of good performances, but it hadn't stayed with me like the second film I saw from her, Things to Come. It's a really great film about a midlife crisis and even though I've never been a middle-aged French woman, it felt very relatable. Bergman Island is her seventh film, this being about a couple of directors who visit Ingmar Bergman's famous island, where he lived and shot many of his films. Bergman Island stars Vicky Creeps, Tim Roth, Mia Wasikowska, I think that's how you say it, I know the, I know the W's or V's, crucify me in the comments please, and Anders Danielson Lee. Contrary to Ingmar Bergman's films, and any story with the setup of a couple goes to an island for a guest, away, Bergman Island is a very light experience. There isn't a lot at stake here, but it's breezy and fun, which I didn't really expect, but it was a good surprise. But it's also one of my criticisms of it, because I wasn't as emotionally invested as I wanted to be. There is a part of the film that is quite dramatic, but the way that that sequence is framed, it's hard to be completely sucked into what's happening. There's a lot of beautiful locations, and it's well acted, especially from Mia Wasikowska, who I think has the most to do emotionally, like she has the most going on. But honestly, my favorite part and the thing that I'm most grateful about with this experience is that although this is a celebration of Ingmar Bergman and his life, they didn't spoil any of his films because there are quite a few I haven't seen yet. There's a scene where they watch Cries and Whispers and I was thinking, please don't spoil this movie for me. Please don't spoil this movie for me. And the film spared me, thankfully. It's good to know that Mia Hansen love is aware enough to realize that maybe people will see her film before they see something like Fanny and Alexander because how many times have you watched a movie where someone is referencing another movie and they spoil the entire thing with the arrogance or just lack of self-awareness that maybe there are other people who are watching your movie before they watch that one it's kind of ridiculous I'm just anti spoiling movies in movies anyway Bergman Island is a pretty good time and I would recommend that you see it even if you haven't seen any of of Bergman's movies. Maybe it'll get you to start. I'd recommend Autumn Sonata as a good starting point. It's awesome. Ingrid Bergman is incredible in it. It's good. It's a good time. And I'm giving Bergman Island a 7 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you agree or disagree, tell us in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share with your friends. Do all the things. The Matrix video is coming soon. LOL. And uh, we got 19 more of these to do. <laughs> Bye. You have to get past the Avengers and Marvel shit at some point, okay? Other f***ing people make movies.